Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you're calling from. My name is Willemijn Peters, and I welcome you on behalf of the United Nations Environmental Program and all other organizers. Welcome to the first multi-stakeholder forum of INC1 for the Global Plastics Treaty. After the fifth UN Environmental Assembly, member states agreed to start negotiations on the Global Plastics Treaty that will look at six core elements. And I'm gonna list them for you here. So once they get in the screen, they will be legally binding. So it's really about promoting sustainable production and sustainable consumption. This treaty is to promote sustainable recycling and at the same time recognize potential risk to humans' health. The treaty is also to consider the full cycle of plastics. So these six core elements are at the heart of the Global Plastics Treaty. And how to set it up and with which targets, that's the gonna be determined in the following coming two years. Before that started, there's already a multi-stakeholder forum, which is today, and where you can share all of your thoughts and potential solutions. So I would like to urge you all to be solutionists today, to really think what you could add or contribute to a global plastics treaty in your role from industry or from science, NGO, government, whatever corner of the world you come from. Look at what you can do and what you would need from others to make sure that plastics stay in the economy and outside of our environment. To make sure that people work together in a collaborative atmosphere. The objective of the roundtable discussions is really to facilitate the exchange of information and ideas among stakeholders in a non-negotiating space. So it's really not about creating consensus. You are here so you can really operate, like this is an opportunity for you to work together. This is your opportunity to create an exchange on the, of your thoughts on collective actions. The key messages will be summarized and they will be aggregated in the plenary of the forum and reported to INC to inform INC participants. So make your voice heard, think in solutions, and this is all gonna be input for the upcoming discussions. So what we're gonna do now, after this short introduction from my side, is move into roundtable discussions and you're going to be moved into a breakout session A, B, or C. These are going to be led by a room moderator. The room moderator of breakout session A, focused on eliminating and designing for circularity, is Xu Yagong. The moderator for breakout room B, circularity in practice, is led by James George. And the room moderator for breakout room C, waste minimization and remediation, Sandra Avrouk Monnery. Great. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you enjoyed uh, sharing your thoughts and ideas. I hope you've had enough time. I know time is limited. We do have another roundtable set this afternoon uh, where you can share any thoughts that just suddenly come up afterwards. Um, you can share still later. But I have seen, I've been going in and out of the different rooms. I have seen quite some discussions going. Uh, we have now reserved the time slot to discuss uh, the outcomes of the three roundtable discussions. And I'm going to talk to all the roundtable uh, moderators uh, of the three different breakout rooms. Uh, so um, first, we're going to see there were two guiding questions mostly. So what are the actions required? How could your institution or network contribute? Um, and how what could be done to scale those efforts or accelerate them? So maybe we can start with the first roundtable discussion. Um, if you're gonna um, uh, uh, share with us, Shuya, about eliminating and designing for circularity, that would be great. What did you? What are the most important action points discussed and uh, the key questions answered? Mural board, it was fabulous. Thank you for everybody who was in um, was in that discussion. Um, it was, I think. Two things that really came up in our in our in the conversation at the very end. The first one was a lot of great a lot of great ideas, um, such great discussion. How do we make sure that we're educating people um, across the board and really able to make these ideas and actions um, available for everybody, not just not just people who are well versed in this already? And I think the second big point that really came up here is how do we think about this holistically and make sure that even though we're addressing this at a global level, 
um, it's something that, for example, small island nations are also able to be able to engage in, and we're really bringing in the voice of local communities um, and people who are on the grounds in, in the world. So thank you all for, for being in that breakout. i um, excited to be back with you guys again later. Great. Uh, thanks, Shuya. Did you did you have any other thoughts on on the actions that were required specifically for for eliminating and designing? Can you have like share some of the more more key points, like some of the actions shared that really stood out? Yeah, I think so. Definitely a um, a moment on making sure that there are standards that are set across the board to be able to coordinate between players that may be in competition traditionally with each other, um, but at this moment in time need to coordinate um, across multi-stakeholder, multi-national, um, multi-industry. Um, and then I think another one is just a consideration for what protocols and treaties and instruments have been created in the past so that we're learning from previous mistakes and learnings and progress um, and making sure that um, nothing is in conflict really with what's already been, been set for both clarity um, and for acceleration um, as quickly as we can. Thanks. And, and maybe we can now move to James because we're going to have like a discussion amongst us. What about circularity in practice? Any thoughts from your side, uh, James, on what you've heard? Yeah, I don't know about the other 164 people on this call, but I'm exhausted after that. Um, it was it was full on. Right. And, and I guess the key thing for me was nothing in there that came out was new. And that's the good news. It means that, you know, we we, we are talking the same language. We're talking about the same areas. When we think about um, the first question, uh, a few areas focused around design, um, specifically when we think about where particular materials are used for particular products in the system that they exist in. Because, you know, there are some plastics that are, that, that are designed to last forever and they are fantastic in the right system. But when we think about uh, a, a comment from Mary, when we think about polymers and microplastics, you know, continually recycling, continually creating a physical change on this material, obviously creates a degraded state that we don't want to see. So how do we be a bit more intuitive around that? Um, there was um, quite a bit around legislation, as you would expect, both as a carrot and a stick, whether that's financial or, or whether that is um, actually to just drive businesses to think about these, these challenges um, better. And there was a, a very um, interesting kind of dynamic between um, a global north and a global south perspective. When we think about a legal dumping, when we think about um, waste being sent to foreign countries, how do we use trade agreements as a way to limit that and minimize that? How do we make sure that we're bringing in the right kind of framework at the governmental level to minimize these things showing up in our environment and, and therefore being a problem downstream? Um, lots more in the board. Um, I'm only thankful for my two colleagues who were capturing all the information in the chat because um, we only scratched the surface. Great, thanks. I can see some similarities as well, also with uh, what you have said. Uh, Sandra, can you add from your side on, on waste minimization and remediation, what was talked about then? Yes, with pleasure. And uh, we had a very dynamic group as well. So thank you very much to, uh, for, for the, the numerous input. I'm sure I'm not going to do justice to all of them, but uh, we'll have some time to, uh, to, to recap and make sure it's really um, put forward. Uh, maybe a, a couple of uh, interesting points when talking about uh, waste minimization. Um, we had quite a number of inputs related to prevention. Um, so probably speaking to uh, the other two groups, uh, including eco-conception, for example. Um, and we had also obviously um, ideas and actions around infrastructure and having a fit for purpose infrastructure for collecting, sorting, um, recycling the, the plastic waste. Um, maybe another element that was really striking in the, in the inputs received in the group is a reference to um, hazardous waste to uh, hazardous effects of plastics. And because there was one specific column dedicated to, to plastic waste um, trade, sorry, plastic waste trade, uh, uh, numerous references to um, the Basel Convention. 
and ensuring um, that there is a prevention for export, for example, of, of plastic waste to nations with insufficient capacity to manage the waste and a requirement to ensure harmonized guidelines for recognition of recycled content. Um, a lot of transparency uh, elements, including on the chemicals involved in those plastics. Uh, so, so this was really, really striking. And again, coming back to promoting sustainable circular products also as part of trade strategy. So it's not necessarily trade, uh, plastic waste trade, but coming back to the eco-consumption and the prevention. Um, the idea to invest in the different types of, um, of um, uh, recycling or treatments that could um, exist uh, and, and have potential. Um, and maybe one last point was uh, really a mention from uh, many stakeholders. So there was a mention of informal workers and making sure that uh, there is attention paid to the informal workers, to governments, as well as uh, potential economic instruments, taxes, EPR were mentioned, and the diversity of countries. Um, so calling for equitable funding for um, low and medium, low and lower income countries, for example. Um, so yeah, a very, uh, very dynamic uh, group with elements maybe on the second question related to what could be in the instruments. There was as much legally binding targets or legally binding reuse and refill targets as information on how do you refer to a existing international standard or harmonization of standards on plastic packaging, for example, reducing use of multi-material multi-layer, as well as voluntary informative uh, information campaigns and economic instruments, um, with the mention of, of taxes on landfill and or burning, for example, uh, just as an example. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. I can see quite some similarities across the groups. I think, of course, the targets are not like very rigid. Uh, I think one or two of the actions on the one will also um, impact the others. James and Shuya, do you also recognize that part? I mean, the whole plastic um, treaty is, of course, set up because we are losing quite some plastics to our environment. Um, there's uh, quite some concern from different partners uh, uh, across the value chain within the industry, but also within science, within NGOs. Um, and there's quite some reports come out this week, even on the um, chemical hazardous uh, substances. Is there something that was also a topic of discussion in your sessions? We actually had so many moments where we had said like, oh, that's a, like, that's a really great point on what do we, well, what do we do with there's elimination to begin with, but also to design for a circular system means to design in the waste at the very beginning and there were many moments of like okay can't wait to debrief and see what was said in breakout group uh along waste minimization because that's the zoomed in part of what we were talking about designing and so i think what's nice about it is whenever we're talking about circularity there's no necessarily beginning or an end there um, and so that waste part of the cycle is something that you think about at the very beginning as well so yeah I'm eager to share learnings um across these these two different breakouts for sure not not dissimilar as you as you'd expect actually a couple of the first few comments in the chat were almost you know we were looking at the reuse component but but sort of coming before that and saying well let's stop this being a problem in the first place so again getting back to that design element um christian in our group raised the idea you know about eco design and looking at some of the legislation that's coming to force in the eu that could possibly be used as a framework to adopt across other geographical jurisdictions, um, but 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 not dissimilar, right? I think the beauty of this conversation, uh, as we just mentioned, there is no start and end point. Um, it's it's about taking a systemic approach, um, and actually, us artificially putting ourselves in three groups is useful for today. But actually, when we think about the solutions, we need to pull across all of those all of those elements. Yeah, great. So, so I think also the the element that were mentioned, all the economic instruments, um, they touch upon all the three uh, different ones. Have you heard any specific actions that should be taken from specific partners that you think ah that could really 
uh, that was something that was heard quite diversely or is it is that something that there's alignment on to have more instruments in place or rather less um not judging if one is better than the other and just trying to see if this is a, re a relevant topic for all three i guess from my side the thing that came out most of all was around legislation where that's used as both a carrot and a stick um so it's not you know there was an equal measure of talking about punitive measures, fines, that sort of thing, but also how do we incentivize correctly compared to the system we have at the moment? There was obviously in there around financial, um, education, and, and design, as we've already mentioned, but, but legislation cropped up quite a few times as a mechanism to level the play, playing field, but also forced those worst offenders to get, to get serious and get started. specific companies uh, and examples of projects that were maybe already in play coming up. Um, and so everything from how do you think about bioplastics or how do you think about feedstock being something that could potentially not be considered waste in the traditional sense as well as an input, um, all the way to what does it look like for during the implementation of some of these instruments, we were to have in there an example of, for example, IKEA or another large organization say like, this is what your instrument actually would look like in play in your specific supply chain, um, all the way to um, had someone uh, graciously from Vera speak up to explain like, what is something that's already Pretty live and in, in, in play right now um, and trying to address some of the issues that we brought up. And so I think that getting to that specificity of who would the partners be um, and how could we get them um, into, a, into a conversation and, and be a case study early on um, was a very powerful uh, way of changing the uh, policy and legislation level to something that felt uh, like it was on a very day-to-day -day basis um, and felt uh, in the lives of day-to-day -day consumers. Mm -hmm. Sandra, do you have anything more to add on this point? Yeah, I think the our our group was really uh, looking at actions without necessarily pointing to uh, to existing action and existing stakeholders, and maybe that's how the the questions were framed as well uh, for that specific group. Um, so uh, there there were some references to uh, to funds, you know, and existing funds or to um, to some specific initiatives or ISO standard, for example, the importance of the 14,001 ISO standard, um, but uh, nothing in the different stakeholders as mentioned, but nothing really specific on the, on a, a specific stakeholder and an initiative. And maybe just one, one point that I forgot and I feel very bad about um, is, um, the importance of, of life cycle assessment and, and life cycle costing that was also um, extensively mentioned in uh, assessing alternatives as well. Yeah, I know I've noticed that in other groups as well, also the standardization of these kind of instruments. So it's not being used as a marketing instrument, but really a standardized tool. Uh, standardization seemed to pop up even without having like economic instruments, but standardization seemed to pop up everywhere, both on labeling, on on chemicals, on language, it's uh, quite diverse. Um, is that um, uh, is that something that some like in the actions mentioned that were needed for accelerating or for scaling? Is that something that was being con concretized? Like, is that something that was going to be uh, elaborated on as well? Like, did any of the inputs focus on how to scale those efforts towards standardization? I can uh, I can give it a go if you wish, but we we had some mention of uh, of harmonization of standards, for example, for plastic packaging and multi-material, multi-layered packaging. So very specific. Um, there were also some others that uh, I I failed to uh, to find exactly, but uh, and related to labeling, I think they, it was uh, not highlighted extensively in the group related to waste probably because of the what is at stake with with waste is transparency and and knowing um, at least the hazardous and harmful content uh, and ensuring that it can be properly um, sorted collected and and treated so um, more of a transparency um, angle at least in the waste group Okay, thank you. I think um, what 
I know uh, at least is that there's quite some participants also from industry that are working on standardization and harmonization of, of, of uh, certain elements like labeling. So it could be that some of the people that gave input also brought forward their solutions and you're really trying to see what you could do to scale those. Uh, is there any mention of that in the groups um, from you like either Shuya or James? And the ISO uh, standards came up uh, quite a few times, I think, in, in our conversation. It's like, what does it look like to develop these standards? And what standards are there already that we should highlight and bring to the forefront and just remind folks of it again? Um, I think that there was also a lot, just a plus one on um, Sandra's point and also Jeffrey's point in the chat. Um, there were also a couple of, of moments that we were thinking about, like, okay, like, if you are uh, going to market that you're doing something, you are also responsible for it. Um, so being able to really reinforce the um, the actions around, like, if you if you are going to be um, someone who speaks up and says that we are we are going for a more circular approach or we are going to now become uh, responsible for treating waste in this manner um, to be able to have that tracking and transparency in place to to hold someone accountable for it and follow up on it and um, to have the analytics of how are we progressing and what's working and what's not and be able to have a feedback and learning cycle at the meta layer as well as education on the ground. I guess the only, the only difference, I, I, I agree with both uh, the comments from the other two groups, I guess the only difference that cropped up in ours was standardization and uniformity is great, but then if the infrastructure doesn't exist to deal with it, um, you, you you know, that's the biggest problem. We can all agree on what particular materials are, but we don't, if we don't geographically have the infrastructure to deal with it, we don't make that problem go away necessarily. So so I think there's, there's always that component to it as well. How do we make sure there's uniformity and standardization in how we talk about it, but then also how we process it and and and, and the, the the way that these materials show up in our economy. A good point, of course. Is there any new thoughts on potential solutions to break that? Like, yeah, it's like, a, where do you start? Like if you're building solutions that are based on today's thinking, you can't get there, right? So is there any new thoughts that you popped up and you think like, oh, that could be quite revolutionary. It could be a way forward from either of the groups that you think like that would just really break through. From, from my side, nothing springs to mind and I, and I don't want to lead the witness necessarily. Um, so I think I, I, I might pause on that and say we'd have to dissect some of the comments because I think there's, there's such a an iceberg, such a depth of information beyond the bits that we have pulled out that um, I'm probably not doing justice to. Okay, I can see in the chat there's something on. Uh, if you have any thoughts, please share them in the chat. So yeah, I can also see that uh, transparency was also quite important. Uh, so being transparent about it, but also having, uh, I think Sandra, you shared that as well on the labeling uh, to have um, the placing of labels on plastic products with a mention of origin. So quite some of those uh, uh, initiatives popped up. Um, just trying to make sure that I capture everything right. Um, don't want to leave anyone behind. Is there anything more on terms of behavioral change that was mentioned um, in one of the in one of the groups, for instance? Waste I know in waste minimization there was quite some discussion on behavioral change. group. It was actually a it was a conversation around behavior change, but in an interesting twist, which was what are the things that we can do that actually don't require a whole lot of behavior change and are substituting um, the uh, use of plastics that are already existing. So what does it look like to preserve the functionality and the convenience and the processes we've become used to as consumers slowly start to change mindsets, but be able to bring in the new technologies and innovations around biomaterials or around waste cycling um, that minimize the disruption for what you're used to and use that as a transition phase into new materials um, and encouraging um, innovation in that sector uh, and then slowly being able to change behavior knowing that that takes maybe a, a, a longer um, and more time to get used to new habits. Thanks for sharing. What about you, James? Um, I know like sometimes behavioral change takes long but COVID times have shown us as well. It doesn't need to take that long as long as they are in crisis mode. James, anything on once the materials are already there, circular, how to keep them in and how to change behaviors towards keeping circularity 
uh, effective? Yeah, it, 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 cro it cropped up um, a, a, a couple of ways from, you know, the, there was one um, comment from, from how in Nigeria was talking around um, technology and innovation and, and, and how do we use that in a way to look at alternative material sources, um, you know, maybe looking, you know, my interpretation, maybe looking at the characteristics we need in a product rather than the material itself. And actually, what are the alternatives that are already out there? Um, I'm just trying to look through my notes here if anything else kind of kind of comes through. Um, again, touching on the, the conversation around design, did talk there about sort of degradation of products and the way they're utilized. Um, there was a bit, there was a comment from Lucia around, uh, we dipped into fashion for a moment, um, thinking about, you know, rather than trying to create structures and systems that allow for materials to end up in different parts of the economy, how do we start by just keeping that product circulating? How do we make sure that it is made in a way that makes sure that, um, it stays in its primary form rather than us worrying about where it's got to go once that first life has has finished with. Um, but again, lots of uh, lots of stuff on the boards, and I think we'll be pouring over it for a little while. Good. And does that mean, like, because you're saying like extended producer responsibility would also then be key? Yeah, that popped up um, again. Yeah, you know, we we had um, indications of uh, EPR and its and its um, use again. We mentioned before about how do these things get incorporated into trade agreements? When we think government to government, you know, how do we bring terms like circular economy into those trading agreements so that they're there from the outset? So there's no excuse then for businesses when we think about materials cross borderly. Um, and you, you, there were lots of other there was elements there around some of the other mechanisms that we see that don't always work lock stock but can be useful in different behavioral components like drs you know how do we get i guess the big thing for me is how do we unlock the economics around it rather than just thinking about the material actually where's the value and actually if we unlock the value and we talked a little bit in our discussion very early on about business models um you know if we unlock that value then actually that feels like a mechanism to um to create an, an enduring behavior change Great, thanks. Uh, Sandra or Shuya, any last thoughts you want to share here? Yeah, maybe I mean, uh, trying to uh, respond to your to your question on behavioral change, it was actually uh, put forward quite extensively. Um, we had three or four, I think, inputs related to behavioral change, to education campaign, to public awareness, changing mentality, changing consumption patterns. And some links saying, well, for that, there is a need for alternatives or uh, for that, there is a need for uh, making sure alternatives are, are put forward and showcased also to consumers. Already, I think the, the biggest takeaway here for me are the one, how do you create something that is global and has guidelines that cover everything? but also are flexible enough to be open for interpretation and adaptation for specific groups on the ground. Um, and I think with that, there's also linking up another large point that was made in our group around how do you actually think about um, and learn from what's already been done um, and sync to existing standards, as well as take what we've learned from the past um, and efforts like this from the past and be able to incorporate that. Um, and I think that those those two things in conjunction, difficult to do, something that's one size fits all, but is a uh, fits all in your localities um, and also takes into past, present and thinking towards the future. Um, difficult task to do, but excited to synthesize all of the, um, the sub buckets and categories of that. Great, welcome back everyone. I hope you enjoyed the discussions. I've been jumping in and out of the rooms again trying to see and listen in what's been said uh, we're having now a part of a recap um, so see what kind of conclusions we can draw upon the input provided during the roundtables i'm um, going to talk to sandra james and marta if you have anything you would like to add or raise just put it through the chat um, i know the, you all worked on different comments and it was a bit more challenging working three different colors on one mural so uh I think this session really showed the amount of expertise and knowledge uh, in this plenary because there are so many people giving good suggestions, um, maybe just 
get a recap from all three of you first. Um, Sandra, you want to go first? Thank you very much. Yeah, we had an extremely rich uh, session um, with uh, with lots of inputs, and the circle would definitely not not sufficient to capture all. Uh, on the on the first question and um, the objective and scope, there were quite some. Uh, would you like to go through by by question? Let's, let's go by question. So all three okay. let's first talk about the first question and then we move to the second. So first the first. First first. So uh, firstly, um, a lot of emphasis on the on the scope and the objective on um, the holistic approach uh, on the waste hierarchy. Um, a lot of emphasis on the importance of linking to the uh, negotiation process and ensuring that stakeholders have a chance to exchange with policymakers, uh, even suggestions to participate in intersessional meetings uh, should the INC decide so. Um, so both on the scope and, and the topics promoting sustainable consumption and production patterns, uh, some focus on microplastics, uh, some uh, um, yeah, specific topics to tackle, um, and on the uh, way to, to organize um, the importance of, of linking to, to the INC, the importance of acknowledging all stakeholders and involving all stakeholders with ambition. Great. How was that for you, James? Anything more specific from your side on objectives and scope of actions? Yeah, um, we, um, we had some really powerful comments in the first question um, from Juan and, and Shannon and a couple of others um, that went into the sort of realms of equity and, and, and multi-dimensional conversations around that. First of all, we started talking about the kind of way this shows up and the impact it has um, around coastal communities, indigenous populations, um, and how that can be best brought into the agenda. How can we how can we represent that within the scope of the proposed objective? Um, we then talked about intergenerational justice. Um, you know, when we think about hazardous waste, when we think about the implication of how these uh, some of these chemicals show up in the environment and show up in our lives at different stages of our um, different stages of our uh, own growth and and where they have greater impact at different stages in our lives. The folks where, you know, the younger generations where potentially is having more of an impact um, in a shorter space of time have a least amount of access to this conversation, the least amount of um, engagement with this conversation. And how do we, how do we, how do we rectify that? How do we make sure that we give the right kind of mechanisms to allow these people to be in the room, the conversation, the next generations, the folks who potentially are going to be affected by this in a way that we don't truly understand at the moment or can't quite can't quite um, bring into the conversation. So how do we bring children and youth into this in, in a way? Um, certainly, Shannon, Juan, I'm, I'm, I'm bastardizing your, your comments there a little bit, so, so feel free to put more stuff in the chat. But some really powerful um, starting points when we think about this as a concept and using that that lens and that lever and then also how do we how do we fund that how do we provide the right kind of funding um for 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 those folks to be present in these conversations because whilst we have a snapshot here what about all of the other you know cop what about all of the other kind of international conference circuit that we need to have these voices show up in hey thanks marta any comments from your side on specific scope and objectives one of the key messages that keep, keep reappearing on the chat throughout our breakout session was focusing specifically on clearly defining the roles of all the stakeholders included in multi-stakeholder action agenda from the beginning in the scope and the objective so that all the agenda around plastic pollution can be, can be worked out and addressed correctly. So without that immediate point uh it seems like we could be missing some of the uh the key areas uh to be discussed and i think that's the only note i wanted to add for the question number one thank you okay good so then let's move forward question number two we're gonna might get back to uh, items of number one but let's move to number two what existing efforts can it learn from 
Uh, Marta, maybe you want to start off with this one. Apologies. A lot of the members of our group has mentioned the EU circular circular plan and the agenda for the EU circularity planning specifically as one of the key plastic initiatives that we should be building upon. Uh, other has mentioned ISWA also multiple times uh, throughout our discussion. Uh, so the EU circular economy strategy and action plan specifically was the one I was just referring to earlier. Uh, uh, many of members of our group have also mentioned looking specifically at the deposit return schemes in Norway and Germany uh, as some of the existing initiatives that, that we should be looking at. And I think those are the three points I would like to share. I'm sure there's plenty more on the board. Thank you. Great. Well, thanks. Yeah, maybe some of the highlights from your side then, James. Yeah, um, we, again, very similar mentioning some of the bits that Marta mentioned there, but also some of the business-led agendas around um, Basil, the EMF's global commitment, some of the stuff from WEF as well. Just how do we how do we build on that? Rather, you know, being additive rather than subtractive and distractive. But then also, how do we mine policies? Good policy that already exists. Marta touched on it slightly there. Um, how do we look at where not just the policy is written well, but where there's implementation and the implementation has been successful? And how can we learn from that and learn from that quicker? We had an interesting kind of diversion from that from Mary around kind of tipping point in toxicology terms. Um, that actually there's a, and Mary, apologies, I'll try and do this justice. There's an element here around the, 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 the chemical toxicology elements that we know and the legislation that already exists and, and, and the effort that we're doing. But actually when we think about the, the, how this material physically shows up in our bodies and the environment, um, we don't yet know the longer term implication for that. So when we do learn those lessons, we'll need to potentially rewrite some of this legislation, rewrite some of this thinking, because actually we don't know what we don't know yet. Um, and, you know, playfully, I brought up the idea of kind of the Mad Hatters and, and lead, you know, we used to make hats out of lead and then we realised that you drove people mad, but we didn't know that at the time. So, so there's stuff we don't know, right? And um, so whilst we can look at what we know today and the direction of travel, we need to leave a bit of space to, to, to understand that we don't have all the answers yet. Oh, very valid points. Great. What about you, Sandra? Do you have anything more to add to the points already mentioned? Yes, I think in our group, a lot of um, initiatives were, were put forward, um, in particular in terms of, um, of, of national initiatives or, or uh, strategies or legislation. So um, the Australian government recycling modernization funds, so the importance of having investment funds and infrastructure investment funds. And that was really in the three questions, uh, the importance on and, making sure that that financing is part of um, the multi-stakeholder action agenda uh, was was strong but also epa national recycling epr schemes such as in french epr scheme uh, con scheme sorry recycled content taxes from the uk and france um, a, a large amount of uh, the plastic packs network both uk and global so very concrete and, and uh, often national, um, uh, the prevent from the Germany uh, Ministry of Environment as well. And, and also uh, highlighting the importance of the bilateral and multilateral cooperation. So uh, some of the EU in, uh, directives, such as the single use plastic directive, also cooperation between EU and China on circular economy. Um, so that's really on the policy aspect. Uh, there was also quite a number of global initiatives mentioned to build upon, um, such as the OSPAR Helcom Marine Litter Action Plans, uh, which are were uh, mentioned to be systematic and constructive. Um, the um, Plastic Waste Partnership, uh, indeed ISWA as well, was, was mentioned an, a number of times. And interestingly, there was also some... Um, uh, mention of other initiatives, not necessarily from the plastics uh, arena, uh, but to learn from and, and to, uh, to maybe help build upon an effective 
uh, agenda, um, including WHO, FCTC, including the Montreal Protocol, and I'm probably uh, forgetting a number of them. Great. Well, thanks a lot. You can already tell that I think it's really valuable to put all these people together and people could give their inputs so we can build on existing initiatives and we don't have to reinvent some wheels. Obviously, a lot more needs to happen, but I think this is really a good starting ground to show like all the best examples so we can move forward quicker. And um, what about the third question? Uh, maybe James, this time I start with you. How could action, how could the action agenda be structured to inform or drive policy decisions? Yeah, and I, I'll try and be brief on this one. I, I did a really poor job of moderating this one because we went down a bit of a rabbit hole and, and, and off piste a little bit because we the conversation became very emotive very quickly, which which I think is really good as well. Because I asked the question to start off by one of the prompts, which was the statement was we should be more focused on key deliverables. And I asked the question, how? Like what deliverables? Is it economic or, or what are the alternatives? And we got into the conversation there around... Um, arbitrary standards on products and how potentially unhelpful that would be because actually a product is much more complicated than the end state it's the materials that go into it. it's how they're bound together it's it's um the layering the la you know all of that element and actually a better idea would be standards a standard based on the key polymers and the characteristics and having design standards so if it fits that design standard, it's acceptable. If it's not, it's waste, and therefore someone has accountability and liability on it. Um, and, and, and taking that approach. Um, and then we, you know, we, we ran uh into, into a number of conversations around accountability, corporate accountability, around some of this, which which I think has shown up in the previous conversations. We could have carried on for at least another couple of hours. So I think the fact that it came to an end was probably a good thing because we um, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of energy and a lot of um, intellectual property within this group, um, and I think we tried to capture it as best as possible on the board. But I think that's all I've got for that third one for now. Okay, great, An interesting rabbit hole, though. Very good. Yeah. Um, what about you, Sandra? Do you have any insights on thoughts from the participants on how to structure the action agenda? Yes, many. <laughs> uh, I'll try to to be um, to be brief. I, I think they were um, both requests for really um, inclusiveness. Um, you know, as a, in a way a principle, um, both with reference to to translations, reference to um, youth engagement, reference to. Uh, the importance of local action not to be forgotten and and so thinking of the c40 initiative that exists on climate for example um, another dimension very strongly was about stock taking about setting up a baseline and then uh, ensuring um, appropriate uh, measurements um, some elements related to putting existing roadmaps uh, on 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 a one stop shop in a way and and being able to measure commitments, or there were more about um, based on the baseline, based on the measurement, uh, could there be action plans? Could there be roadmaps? But definitely very uh, targeted to action change. Um, and we had a comment as well on the importance of uh, consistency of data for the benchmarking. Um, and maybe also some reference to existing um, uh, existing policies and, and how can the multi-stakeholder action agenda support reaching the uh, objective and milestones of these existing policies. For example, uh, circular economy policies were, were mentioned. Um, so yeah, I'll start with that. Great, thanks. Marta, maybe you can share your insights from the participants in your group. Absolutely. So some of the distinct ideas that did appear uh, in my group was to structure the actions in three distinct levels through policy and governments, so the internations, through processes uh, and manufacturing, so the industrial, uh, and then personal responsibilities and user and households. So that was one of the points uh, as far as the structure specifically is concerned. Many of the stakeholders in participation have mentioned 
the issue of the international stock take and then the tailored uh, nation uh, necessities. They have also mentioned that, as I mentioned at the beginning, addressing all the stakeholder roles is a top priority, but also they've mentioned that including the cities, cities specifically in the multi-sticker agenda is a top priority. Uh, those are uh, those seem like the the key ideas uh, from our group. On that note, also uh, considering the cultural shifts uh, away from plastic training and education, new material research, uh, and then financial in incentives also uh, have been mentioned as an important part and consideration for multi-stakeholder forum uh, moving forward. And yes, I could go on for a long time. I mean, our board is filled with ideas. Uh, I hope those uh, those give you uh, kind of a highlight of what we have gathered this afternoon. Thank Great, you. well, thanks a lot. It seems there has been a lot of thoughts on how to structure it best, uh, but also how to build on existing uh, initiatives already. Uh, so, um, uh, what do you think? There's any thoughts from your side, uh, and Marta, or from from Sandra, maybe, to share a bit more on on how do you see the way forward now? What do you think is needed to assemble all this this input, and and have you identified things that we should do in a follow up, or or that should be uh, not forgotten about? Yeah, I'm happy to start. There were actually very concrete idea um, in, in that case on, on annual or biannual meeting to be able to discuss progress and to plan way forward. Uh, there was also um, uh, input around structuring the agenda around short, medium and long term actions. So uh, maybe that's also uh, one of the, the kickoff, defining really what can be immediate short, medium and long term goal um, for for the agenda and, and for you know, ending plastic pollution. Martha, any thoughts from your side? Yeah, I would share that note, you know, in terms of like short term solution mentioned also in our group specifically were working groups that would help specific stakeholder groups align how to help in the most efficient way for this forum to add value to the INC process moving forward. That's one of kind of a short term uh, approaches uh, that have been discussed. Another short term uh, issue maybe of sort that have been mentioned and alerted a few times for the, the funding schemes for the forum as well, how they should be considered across private sector and beyond. Uh, those those are the key notes on my front. Thank you. Great, thanks. That's also quite helpful. I think the funding and investment mechanisms, are, of course, are going to be one of the key challenges also in the negotiations. Uh, what we see is that different countries, of course, have different interests. So we've also seen quite some, at least what I've seen from hopping from one room to the other, is that, that there were quite some discussions on that as well. Um, so what will uh, what happen now is also that if we're putting all of this input together, that will really um, inform like the, the other sessions after this. So maybe we can sh show um, the slide that I'm supposed to share now um, on how all of this input from your side is uh, going to be used today um, so we're going to have a feedback round not just here and uh, like we just had but also in the plenary in the uh, live <clears throat> event in Uruguay so the key conclusion session will start at 4 30 and it's based on the two sets of the round table discussions we had here and also um, this is really about like these key conclusions will also be brought into INC1 on November 29 during the stakeholder dialogue session so all of your input is being recorded, like I said, the chats are being saved, the murals are being saved, and it's being used uh, as, as input, valuable input to move forward. I'm not sure if there's going to be any further, what, what, the, what they will look like in the multi-stakeholder forms, if there's going to be any multi-stakeholder forms in upcoming INCs, but we'll definitely inform you if, uh, if there are. I think what is also important to note that today was really um, a, a great kickoff point, I think, for, for any way move forward, because uh, I think uh, everyone wants to also voice their opinions and thoughts on solutions. And I think that's really valuable. We've seen many of those, uh, those thoughts. I'm just recapping a few of them, what I've noted. 
in terms of uh, having effective monitoring in traceability, uh, but also standardization of polymer mixes, polymer mixes and the language and labeling. Um, we've also seen quite some discussion on what is needed in terms of design for reuse, recycling or composting, um, having alternative materials and maybe based on standardized LCAs. Um, well, I have also heard back, uh, I didn't mention it just now, but it did hear back in the first round of uh, roundtables is um, we need clear numerical and verifiable targets um, on reuse, recycling, recycled content, so to take priority actions by 2025, but also economic instruments were mentioned quite a few. So um, for examples mentioned today were taxation of landfills or burning or even virgin plastics um, need to be led by science was clearly stated. Um, this all needs to be supporting uh, infrastructure that is fit for purpose. So really feeding for purpose. Um, other mentions was really important of identifying and eliminating problematic polymers and chemicals of concerns and microplastics, quite some concerns there. Um, so how do you control plastic production and exports of waste in a, in a, uh, in a solid manner um, to build on existing initiatives, take stock taking and coordinate and harmonize approach. Um, maybe through regional workshops, uh, re sorry, regional working groups. And uh, I really like Sandra's addition in having short, medium, long-term actions. So all of those inputs, but even more is gonna be shared um, in the roundtable discussions, uh, from the roundtable discussions into the, the plenary later on. I thank you all for participating and look forward to uh, be working with you together, collaborative towards joint actions. Thanks a lot.